Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Let's Play Death Stranding. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. I do apologize for the lack of videos in the series, uh, as I've been incredibly busy uh, over the past few weeks. But uh, I'm back and hopefully uh, here to stay for uh, at least more Death Stranding videos. Obviously, I've been uploading Dark Cloud and uh, Diablo 3, as those are the mainstay right now of the channel. And uh, this is all extra in my own time fun randomness extra stuff and uh yeah i particularly like death training a lot so i'm hoping to be able to finish the game before the very end uh anyway let's go ahead and check the active terminal i think we've already read all the dialogue in the last episode so i just want to double check there's nothing special here under the mail my god this game feels so good at high frame rate it's unreal engine three actually it's not <laughs> <laughs> what engine is this again? Decima engine, that's right. They handed Kojima and team, Kojima and crew, the Decima engine, on a silver platter. It was awesome. One of the coolest things ever. That isn't what we agreed on. You said you'd do everything in your power to save BB. We are. Believe me when I tell you it's for the best. It's the woman in the mask who's done nothing but lie to me. So uh, what I've done so far is I've actually amplified the audio in the game by six decibels to hopefully make it a little bit more balanced. Scanning bridges ID. Verifying ID. Sam, there's something I forgot to tell you. It's about managing your BB stress levels and reducing the risk of autotoxemic attacks. There are a few things you can do if your BB starts showing signs of distress. Such as? Such as take a moment to look after it. Cradle the pot, gently rock it, that sort of thing. Out of curiosity, how's it doing at the moment? Uh, before I answer that... Something wrong? When I hook up my BB, I see things. What kind of things? Like a face, someone I don't know, calling to me. There's this room, too, with other people talking, but I can't make out the words. Hmm, lead-through effect. Didn't I warn you about this? You're mistaking the BB's memories for your own. They're false flashbacks, nothing more. Let me explain. A BB is harvested from its steel mother at around 28 weeks and placed in a pod. To be clear, this is before it's even born. The procedure halts its development, but even at 28 weeks, its sensory systems have matured enough to process external stimuli. It is more than capable of encoding this information into memories, which can bleed into yours via your connection. So who's the man I saw? Someone from the medical team, maybe? Or a BB technician? Does it matter? The BB has been in circulation for a while now. It's been handled by a lot of people. How should I know which one made an impression? Because you're the expert. No one's an expert, Sam. BBs were developed decades ago in secret. They're your quintessential black boxes. We may use them, but we don't truly understand them. Believe me, I've been trying to learn more, but almost all of the old records are gone. If I find anything out, I'll tell you, all right? Dead man's honor. Clear. All weapons will remain locked until the party. All clear. Welcome, Sam Porter Bridges. Awesome, so we're starting to see the effects of our movements. So people are actually pleased with us. We already have a thousand likes. Hey, not bad. Which means our stamina is reduced, or stamina drain rather is reduced. Um, and you're gonna get those likes accumulated every time you log back into the game, which is really, really cool. Uh, regardless though, we do have another mission probably available for us. So let's go check this out. While you're arresting, I ran some network diagnostics. Aurelia monitoring and holographic systems are nominal. Unfortunately, our printer is offline. I know, I know, after all the trouble you went through to bring us those materials. This one's on us. We ordered a part a while back, but it never arrived. The printer needs it to communicate with the chiral network. Mules must have snatched it, caught that porter en route or something. If I'm right, they'll have taken it to their drop site, which is smack dab in the middle of their territory. I don't suppose you'd be up for stealing us our property back. Can't think of anyone more qualified than you.
All right, so now we got some new orders, so we can move on and steal from the mules. But what we're actually going to do first is collection chiral crystals. And this is very valuable because a lot of uh, items in the game require chiral crystals to be made. Uh, and they are they don't weigh anything, right? Like, you can have max chiral crystals on your person and never have to worry about being overburdened by them. And they're just a thing that you pick up as you're going along. As long as there's rain in the area, you're going to find bigger crystals. Those are those hands, those golden hands that we uh, spot as we go through it. So let's listen to the briefing before we pick this one up. Sam, the area around that distro center has produced a significant quantity of chiral crystals. Matter of fact, that's where the chirelium used in your Cupid's internal circuitry came from. They have a range of applications, including equipment fabrication. Bottom line, they're a valuable resource and one you'll want to make the most of. I'll let Hartman explain in more detail, but chiral crystals don't exactly grow on trees. If you see any deposits, you should go out of your way to gather them, especially since folks with dooms are the only ones that can, provided they have the necessary equipment, that is. I'll see that it's added to your supplies for this order. Sam, it's Hartman. Following the discovery of the beach, we not only began to observe heretofore unseen phenomena, but a new type of matter, Chirelium. I say new, but it has doubtlessly existed since the dawn of the universe. We believe it was always there, like dark matter and certain particles, ever present, yet overlooked because we lacked the capacity to see it. Chirelium appears to be unbound by the constraints of physics as we understand them. It can stop time or move contrary to it. On occasion, it even defies gravity. In practical terms, it can stop or even reverse time and causes objects to float. A special cylindrical case is required to collect and store it. Suffice it to say, the procurement of samples is vital to our ongoing research. All right. Large description for it, at least, but that's because this stuff is actually super valuable to us. And we get a PCC, apparently, with it. I don't know why. Oh, because they, they want us to make a communications tower. That's right. Uh, okay, so let's accept this order here. And again, you don't have to accept all the orders at once. Mama's added a watchtower schematic to your PCC. If you don't have it on you, consider fabricating one. You never know when you'll need to recon an area. All right, hang this on our tool rack, and we currently have used climbing anchors, which are completely useless, so we'll just offload those on the ground. They'll be automatically destroyed over time. Uh, I believe later we also get the ability to just recycle things if we haven't unlocked that already. Uh, but all we need is the PCC, and we should be good to go. And we're also about to get some new Half-Life stuff. A crystal collector. Now, as the name suggests, it provides secure storage for any crystals you gather. <laughs> Uh, allow me to describe your quarry. Chiral crystals appear gold to the naked eye and are frequently found in formations resembling human handprints. The surrounding rocks and debris tend to float a few feet above the ground. And they are most commonly found in areas with high precipitation. Got all that? Hmm? Rain, floating rocks, golden handprints. That's your trifecta. Look for these three things and you'll find the crystals. If you've been especially observant, then perhaps you already know where to look. Order of time. All right, fantastic. Oh, that's what's getting all the likes. Okay, good thing I dropped this in the last episode. Yeah, these signs are super valuable uh, for making you all the likes in the world. And the thing is, it's when players run by them, especially when the game just came out on PC. You're gonna get a lot of people liking these automatically just by running past them, especially the keep on keeping on stuff. And yeah, being attached to the Cairo network is gonna give us a huge benefit as we go through it. Regardless though, let's go grab ourselves uh, some of these Cairo crystals. Cairo crystals are pretty small and can be difficult to spot with the naked eye. I'd advise you to use your ultra deck to point you in the right direction. If you want to survey a wider area, though, you might consider building a watchtower and relying on its sensors. Which is not a bad idea. You can always tear down these towers. They're not very expensive to put out, even if you're making PCCs by hand. Uh, the only things that are expensive in the game, really, are bridges and the private rooms. Looks like we have a post box put out here. So it's raining, so that could definitely mean that, you know, BTs could exist somewhere. 
but it's not really that big of a deal. We can switch our structures, go down the button, uh, down on the D-pad, or uh, tap it here. We only have two options, which is Watchtower and the Post Box, so let's drop down. A lovely watchtower here. It's not too bad of a spot. Obviously, higher ground would be preferable, but if you look at the terrain here, it's just impassable over on the side. Pretty well, I wouldn't say that's impassable. Maybe we could put a watchtower up there, but it's not necessarily needed. Yeah, the upside, upside down rainbow there definitely indicates that we have BTs nearby, uh, which are usually just hanging out over there. All right, let's use the watchtower and scan the environment. Which already we're gonna spot hundreds, if not thousands of the stuff. Like, it's just crazy just how much of it exists. Zoom all the way around. And this stuff will stay pinged for a while. I'm not sure if it's permanent. I'm pretty sure it's like a five minute timer, something like that. But it's more than enough to get you what you need. And since we have no gear on us, it doesn't matter if we get grabbed. As long as we don't get eaten by BTs, the giant boss monster, that is, uh, then we will be okay. Because we can create a crater, and the worst thing ever is when you do stuff like that. Uh, because it messes with your own pathways, and it deletes player structures for your own game. Uh, which can absolutely be uh, a damn pain. Okay, we got shivers over here. Probably not a good idea to keep going that way, then. Considering there should be a decent amount of handprints in this zone. Um, you know what? I'm gonna do a double... Oh, I was gonna try and double jump it, but that didn't work out so great. Gotta be a little patient here. See how it's getting darker? That makes you pretty much realize that BTs are definitely in the zone at this point. But we're really on the edge. Like, if we were to stop moving, we'd probably might see one in the distance. Yeah, there you go. See how far away they are? It's not too bad. But it's a good sign for finding more of this stuff. And someone's already put a bridge down in a strange spot. Oh, wait, no, it's not too bad. Hey, good stuff. You know what? Oops. Let's not go into photo mode. I'm going to do that a lot. I did a live stream of this game the other day, just kind of messing around and getting used to the controls again. Um... And it actually got further than this. And, uh, I gotta say, some of the ladder placements are pretty hilarious. <laughs> some people put ladders in the strangest places, but it's okay. <clears throat> the nicest thing about this whole structure system is you may notice that number in the top, 450 of 230, or sorry, uh, 2320. Uh, weirdest way to say that number, apparently, but... Those statistics are essentially uh, our limit of how many structures we can build. And as we build links with other people, we're going to be able to build more structures. But player structures do not affect that number whatsoever. And I don't believe ladders or anything like that affect it either. So for the most part, it's just nice to have. Regardless of if they're useful or not, they're there and they're useful. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, as long as they're there, you're okay. Uh, anyway, I think we only needed 100, right? So we're pretty much golden. We check our map. Oops. Oh, uh, yelling could actually attract BTs, which is fun, because you can actually distract them and get the handprints to go weird ways. Uh, distribution center west of Capital Not City. Let's see if we can maybe spot any distro items here. See what I mean, though, by having to spam R1 a lot in the game? You will notice that this is very common for me. And I forgot just how good the movement mechanics in this game are. It's literally the best movement in a video game. I just can't stress it enough. It feels so good to move around. And now with the added addition of uh, BB no longer taking up 10 seconds of your time every time you get into a BT zone, like this game has just gotten 10 times better. Because I can't tell you how many times I've set up a delivery route and I have to drive straight through, like, two or three BT zones. And then we have to go through an introduction, like, Hey, there's BTs in the area. Here's a 10-second animation. You're locked down. You can't do shit, you know. 
uh, and you can't go through it. Now, the only downside with BTs is that they do shut down your vehicle for uh, three seconds. Um, it's kind of like a horror element, I guess you could say. So, that can definitely affect it. The thing is, is that later we're going to get access to roads on another part of the game. And those roads typically do go through BT territory just because, I don't know, this game's evil. Might as well grab some resins on the way back. And we'll grab some metals as well. These things do weigh a lot. So that sound there is essentially the BTs leaving the area. Um, they're basically on a timer. And as we play through the game, we'll even get, get access to gadgets and items that we can use that can help us determine when the BTs are going to come out and, in full force, right? So it could be raining, but that doesn't necessarily mean that BTs are in the area. But the rain will still affect your equipment, will affect your gear, uh, and could potentially be a problem. Beginning scan. Scanning. So we got... Oh, God. As I trip up here. Sam. Time of crystal deliveries are a little different than usual. The process is pretty simple, though. Access the delivery terminal to drop off any chiral crystals you're carrying. All right, so we got our crystals, and now we can hand them in. And as he said, it's a little bit different than normal. We have to recycle, uh, which we can use these items on our back. We can recycle those, and they'll go into this particular facility's metals, resins, chiral crystals, etc. as we get more and more of these items. So we might as well put the 100 uh, required amount. Normally, you can put all of it. It's just for this quest, we can only put 100, because that's the, the bonus that we get if we do 100 instead of just one. Got some chiral crystals for us? These crystals only form in places with elevated chirillium levels. Which makes me wonder if expanding the network had something to do with it. <laughs> Damn, son. That is a lot of crystals. Maintenance and R&D will both get their fill, looks like. And this should theoretically push us into rank four. Or, uh, yeah, into tier four, but we'll get the rank three uh, crystal. And we get container repair spray, which is very nice, especially for the next major area we're going to. Um, we're going to be stealing from the mules next, which is not so bad, so we don't need that. But we're going to be going into an area that's constantly raining, and you have to go very slowly through because there's a lot of BTs. Container repair spray, very nice for in case you get grabbed by BTs, you're not going to damage your gear as much because your containers are going to get damaged. Most likely, you'll get 100% damage if you don't bring them in terms of your container. But if you're very careful and you're not too worried about it, you don't even need to bring this stuff. It's just a nice safety net in case you need some container repair spray. But it will never repair the stuff inside the luggage, right? So keep that in mind. Excess chiral crystals can be deposited at any facility. They'll be added to the stores held on site. These local stores include materials that you can draw upon to fabricate equipment as needed. Excellent. Thank you. Good work, Sam. It seems your connection level is increasing. As your connection level increases, larger quantities of resources will be made available to you at our facilities. Excellent. Okay, so we've made a thousand likes from this recipient, which is enough EXP to be able to upgrade them. And this gives us, <laughs> it's nothing special, but it allows us to customize our structures when they get to level three. We can have a bridges, or sorry, level two or higher in this case. So uh, we can put a bridges guard macho on there. And now we've increased our uh, connection level. This is the biggest thing about getting five stars on all these. Sure, you get a fancy sticker, which I've gotten them all on the PS4 version. Big waste of time. Don't recommend it. But if you get everything to four stars, you're going to get every item in the game. And that's the most important thing. So remember, four stars is the way to go. Five stars is if you want to get the achievement for five starring everything. Uh, but I recommend waiting and holding off from doing that maybe until you've beaten the game or gotten very close to beating the game. Uh, just because it's not necessary. Like, you don't need to do it, and you get more stuff to mess around with and have more fun with traveling as you progress throughout the game and get those four-star ratings. Uh, I, can only, I can only recommend, just beat the game, and then worry about, you know, five-starring everything. Oh, before I forget. 
This is for you. That's container repair spray for patching up cargo containers. Good for dealing with timefall degradation and all that. Useful stuff if you and your cargo have been through the ringer. We've added it to your supplies list, so it's readily available if and when you need it. Excellent. So we'll just uh, grab these three items here and place them in our private locker. Again, private locker is private to this facility. There is a correlation between elevated corellium levels and increased crystal formation. This may well be the result of the network's expansion. You needn't worry, though. Local chiral density is still within an acceptable range. If you find any more, be sure to collect it. You'll be well rewarded. If you come into more chiral crystals, you can submit them at one of our facilities. And you can deposit other resources, too, along with any items you don't need. Everything has its value. What we don't use as is can be broken down into components for R&D and other applications. All right, so while we're at it, let's go ahead and recycle more of our materials here. So we have resins and metals and the rest of our chiral crystals. Annoyingly though, you can only do like the various materials separately from chiral crystals. Chiral crystals is its own thing. I don't know why that is. It can be a bit annoying, um, but whatever. At least we can still put it in there. <laughs> it just It's just an extra few button presses is all. I also appreciate that you can now press circle to skip instead of having to go through the menus. Thank you for your continued support. Thank you for your continued support. And there you go. Also, as we upgrade this, we get more Kyra crystals, resins, metals, etc. that you put in here. Super, super nice. Super, super good. Uh, so yeah, under fabrications, we can make new container repair sprays and all this other crap that we don't need. But unfortunately, the Cairo printer isn't available. So we have more orders for Sam. Let's go ahead and listen to the briefing of Recovery Cairo Printer Interface. Heads up, Sam. Distro Center staff's got a favor to ask. Probably best I start from the beginning. This one's on us. We ordered a part a while back, but it never arrived. The printer needs it to communicate with the Cairo network. Mules must have snatched it, caught the porter en route or something. If I'm right, they'll have taken it to their drop site, which is smack dab in the middle of their territory. Don't suppose you'd be up for stealing us our property back? Can't think of anyone more qualified than you. So I would like to point out, you see that there's already a trail there? That's other players. We never walked down there before, which is super, super cool. So we can now follow a pathway uh, basically walked already by other players because we're connected to the chiral network, also known as the internet, which is awesome. I love this mechanic. So you need to recover the chiral printer interface that was stolen by the mules. Be warned that mules suffer from drone syndrome and won't relinquish stolen cargo easily. Once you've recovered the interface, hook it up to the printer to bring it online. And it weighs 30 kilograms. Always got to keep that in mind. And we get two free PCCs. Um, we're not going to use either of them, <laughs> but we will throw them into our private locker uh, in case we need them later. But yeah, we are going to... Oh, God. I forget that if you hit circle, it just backs you out. Hold on. All right, there we go. Accept orders. I think you have to put them on your back first. Or you can actually just offload. Offload all. There we go. And then we'll grab this guy, this guy, and throw them into the private locker. Because we just don't need them. Confirm that. Head out. Yes, please. Thank you for your contribution. And that's just so we can make, like, a post box in case we need to throw some stuff away. Um, mules are interested in very specific items. Typically stuff that you would hand in as an order. That is what they're interested in. So if you have container repair spray, boots on your hip or even on your back, um, things that are like tools, climbing anchors, ladders, they don't give a shit because they have tons of that stuff already. Call it a rule or a habit, but most mules almost always bring stolen shipments home with them. 
find the post box, steal back the cargo. Simple as that. But be careful, these guys are armed. If this goes sideways, be ready to fight. And that's true. They will not kill you, though. Um, and they have, again, a difficult time detecting you if you don't have any cargo. Because they're always scanning for your cargo, they're not scanning for you. And as long as that's the case, you should be relatively okay knowing that information going in. This first area is relatively easy, thankfully. Um, unfortunately, no climbing anchor on the way up. That's a bit unfortunate, but we can always make our way around. A bunch of destroyed equipment. Someone must have tossed some stuff aside. And it was left out in the rain. Fair enough. Very surprised there's no climbing anchor there. Remember, Sam, before you approach the mule drop site, we recommend you use a watchtower to confirm the location of the post box containing our cargo. They may notice there's a huge footpath here, as we've been making in other areas as well. It's super convenient when you have other players already doing this stuff. And as we scan the footprints, you'll notice that they're green, and the footprints that we make are blue. Hopefully you're not colorblind, because it's probably a little bit more difficult to see. But as you can see, they're scanning us right now, but they don't see anything. Fuel drop sites are rarely deserted, so remaining undetected is key. Keep a low profile and move slowly to minimize noise. Yeah, they don't really care. And you may notice that, uh, that double up symbol. That's actually a booster for your vehicles, but not for Sam. Sam does not get that boost. Uh, we're not going to pick up those medals. That is a trap. Don't do it. <laughs> You'll get scanned and they'll be like, oh, hello. I'll take those. Thank you. <sighs> so there is an item up here. I don't remember where all of these things are, but you can tell by the glowing symbol. And then you can also scan them too. Uh, some players will also be connected with you and they'll mark these down. Uh, it depends on which players you've been connected with. You're not, com you're never connected to every player in the game, right? And the players that you choose to like more, the more of their items will be in your world. <sighs> and since we're just a newbie Sam Porter Bridges, we don't have everything maxed out, so we can only really have a limited number of uh, helpers right now. Thankfully, Spark Gamer here has thrown down a lovely repelling rod. Or repelling rod? Rope? Whatever. The cool thing is you always have access to binoculars. They're not particularly great for seeing too far away, but it's something. You can see that there is one mule in the base, and there should be roughly two mules in the distance. And what we're scanning, the reason we can see them... Uh, is because of the boxes they have on their bodies. And because the game is nice, we should always be able to tell where they are. For example, there's a dude over there with a climbing anchor. And if you're ever wondering, hey, is that just a, a box or is that a dude? Usually when they're breathing and moving around, you can just tell by looking at the box, right? Anyway, this first area is relatively easy, and once you get used to the combat, you can pretty much take on anyone in the game. Terrorists, mules, anything. It doesn't matter who. Oh, also. Maybe I should give Spark Gamer a bunch of likes, so hopefully we'll get more of his stuff in the game as we go on throughout it. Now, the hardest way to play the game, of course, would be to disable this online functionality. The game is made much easier thanks to working with other players. And that's the whole point of the game, so we're leaving it on. But if you want to give yourself a really fun challenge, and I do recommend it trying it out on a second playthrough, uh, turn that shit off and just try it out. You might be surprised. Okay, so right now we have just a strand for our weapon. It's the rope mixed with Sam's blood. And we're going to use it to stealth assassinate our target up ahead here. Hopefully BB doesn't start crying because of the water. This guy is stationary. He's not going to move. And as long as we're careful, he shouldn't notice us. But there is metal plating on the ground. I'm not sure if he can hear that or not. But you just hold left trigger and you right trigger him down and you're golden. And one thing I am noticing is that they've updated the game to have enemies with what are called high density metal. What it is, is it's actually smaller containers carrying more metal than normal. 
Uh, and it's very convenient to carry around. I, I actually love it. But we're not going to pick them up now because we want to deal with the mules first. I feel like the mules are going to be a threat the moment we get our chiral printer. And the last thing we want to deal with is a bunch of buttholes on our butthole. Of course, they always get cool hats, though. I'm always super jealous. Now, we can hide in the tall grass, but since we're being nice and stealthy, we should be okay. Of course, all of this is non-lethal. However, if their allies spot their friends that are now bound by Sam's strand, then they can unravel them. Much like how in Metal Gear Solid, if someone was hit with a tranquilizer dart and one of their allies finds them, they can just wake them up. However, I can't say for sure in this game uh, if they automatically go into alert. I think they do go into alert like straight up though. Not sure how this guy wants to go about this. You know what? Maybe we'll just go around. Wait for him to make a move. Because I just know the moment I start moving out, he's going to turn, right? As is the basis for all stealth games. All right, and there we go. Been busy? Seems all the mules in your vicinity have been incapacitated. So the game is nice enough to at least let you know that all the guys are taken down. And now we can focus on reaping the rewards here. And of course, if you're ever wondering, like, why or what is stealthy, just scanning the area will tell you. If you want a real challenge, though, just turn that shit off. You can turn off everything in the UI, and then the game becomes a nightmare of like, oh god, where is anything? It could be, it could be pretty interesting for sure. Oops, that was a mistake. We're at 45 kilograms. Gotta be careful here. Obviously, we don't want to be rolling around. <laughs> And these guys aren't going to get up because they're all tied up here and uh, they'll find a way to get loose after a while, but we also knocked them out at the same time. So it's not just that they're tied up, it's that they're tied up and knocked out. And there's a difference. If they're not, if they're not knocked out, if they're just tied up, maybe you're in mid combat or something like that and you counter them, uh, then you'll just tie them up and they can be, they can break loose on their own. Which could prove to be a problem. All right, now we're a bit heavy. Sam, you can now submit upgrade requests for structures. If there's one you use a lot, you should definitely consider it. All right, so requesting certain items to be upgraded is nice, especially if uh, it's like a post box or something, and you're like, guys, we got to make sure this post box never goes away. And upgrading stuff repairs it as well, so it's kind of nice. And we have new interviews as well. We'll have to read later. Um, but for now, uh, let's go look at our cargo for a second. So I want to attach these to our suits. Or actually, you know what? We can just use the auto arrange, which should be relatively okay. Eh, I say relatively. Obviously, at the same time, they are like, yeah, no, let's just put all this crap on our back. Okay, this one on our back. Again, the auto sort is never perfect. We're also going to put the ladder on our back, too, and that should balance us nicely. Um, perfect. Very nice. Because, again, the more that you're leaning, the more problems you're going to have when maneuvering around. 
So we'll see that there's other players' items here that have been stolen. Um, or, in this case, these are not player items, but rather Benjamin Hancock's stolen items. But the only thing that actually matters for us is the chiral printer interface, which is relatively large, too. So we're just going to focus on that. And we have more metals that we can grab, but we really don't have the inventory space to do so. So let's just grab this nice small two kilogram item, put that on our back. And honestly, we could probably just get away with throwing away this ladder. Because um, we always just make another one later. And even the climbing anchor, too. To be quite honest with you. Eh, whatever, it's fine. <laughs> we could just grab more stolen goods, right? But it's whatever. Okay, so now we just gotta be a little more careful on the way back because we are pretty much at capacity. And as anyone would know, the heavier you are, the harder it is to jump. So we really won't be able to jump at all. As long as we're relatively careful and understand that the places that we're going through are rocky and dangerous, we should theoretically be able to avoid tripping into walls. The biggest thing that you can do is trip into a wall. Goddamn cotton ball. All right, you don't have to do this, but we'll drink our monster energy drink. Gotta role play a little bit. And because this amazing player path is here, it's going to make uh, getting back home that much easier. And in this case, if we do start tripping, which we probably will over these items, as long as we're not tripping into the rocks, we're okay. And since there was no rope here for us on this playthrough, we're going to make one for our allies. We'll go ahead and throw down a climbing anchor here. And hopefully it'll help other adventurers on their pathway up to deal with the mules. <sighs> Easy as she does it. Mules. Damn addicts chasing a cargo high. Shame we gotta deal with their bullshit at all. Back in the day, AI did everything. Deliveries were handled by unmanned vehicles and drones. And all we had to do was sit back and let them work. It was revolutionary. Damn near singularity. No reason for it not to take off. But it didn't. People didn't like it when we took the human element out of the service industry. So, after some consideration, we put it back in. Made jobs no one really needed and gave them to folks who couldn't live without them. And from there, it snowballed. Now we got cults of cargo chasing crazies who get off on hijacking shipments. Jackal's always on the lookout for the next order. Make sure you're not him. until departure. Cargo verified. Thank you. So thankfully we made it back in one piece. No damage on us, no damage on the cargo. Relatively safe, and we didn't accidentally run into a wall. Although, I gotta be a little careful here, because you can potentially smack yourself right into one of these little pistons here. Decontaminating suit. All clear. Welcome, Sam Porter Bridges. And for someone that was in yellow weight, that's actually not too bad. Alright. So, we can actually share that memory chip with the guy. this up for me? He shouldn't have. Really. Very right, cool. Seven Samurai. I believe Die Hard Man is super into, like, old movies, right? <laughs> the Seven Samurai and stuff like that. Anyway, let's uh, deliver everything back. This should also uh, return the... Yeah, there you go. It's checkmarked, I believe, so it should be good. Should put everything in there. I'm hoping. Yeah, there you go. 
Skip through this, get the easy S rank. Sam, how are your shoes holding up? Not too well, I imagine, conditions being what they are out there. Nothing ruins your day like shoes falling apart while you're on the job. Carry on like that and it's only a matter of time before you injure yourself. I've arranged for boots to be added to your supplies. Bridges standard issue, so they ought to fit you fine. You should always carry an extra pair. But if you forget or run into trouble, you can fabricate another via a terminal at one of our many facilities. Very nice. Boots, super important. If you're bleeding, that means uh, you'll start sustaining damage over time. But uh, there's a cap, so you can never go below a certain amount. In fact, someone's actually beaten the game with no shoes whatsoever and having bleedy feet for the entirety of the game. Um, hilariously, though, that found a nice exploit where if you're constantly tripping, because you will trip a lot with no shoes or damaged shoes, um, you can actually propel yourself forward quite fast. Uh, you just have to be very, very careful about, uh, where you're going. Also, jumping over and over again, very useful as well. Uh, so pretty funny how that works. And we've unlocked a, another PCC ability, the bridge, which is super valuable, and it'll be another quest that we have to do momentarily here. And there you go. See you around. Congratulations, Sam. I understand you now have access to a chiral printer. An extraordinarily useful device that can only function because of the manner in which our network utilizes the beach, enabling us to transfer massive volumes of data instantaneously. Since under normal circumstances, such transfers would take hours, if not days, some have speculated that the chiral network might, in essence, be a time machine. That it is transmitting data into the past. Suffice it to say, we have yet to fully grasp the fundamental nature of the network and the beach which we have come to rely upon. One might liken our relationship with it to that of primitive man's with fire. Is it useful? Quite. Is it dangerous? Undeniably so. Nevertheless, we have decided that the reward outweighs the risk. Furthermore, as the BTs are linked to the beach, it stands to reason that further study and experimentation could be of considerable benefit. The same could be said regarding you, of course. <laughs> Rest assured, I will keep you apprised of what I learn. You have my word. Good work. New order available. Please access delivery terminal for further information. All right, before we continue on, let's toss our items in here. Always good to recycle these things. Actually, hold on, because these are high density, these could be very valuable for creating uh, bridges and things like that. So it might actually be more worthwhile to us to not recycle these. And in fact, to put them into our private locker. Your private locker can be used to store cargo and the like. Surprisingly, the game has now to and now need to uh, explain that to me. Also, the EX grenades here are things that we can test out and throw at BTs. I believe number zero, which is from showering, um, marks the BT so it's constantly visible to us. Um, and I believe a few other, like I think number one might scare them away or something, and number two might do another thing. I kind of forget, but the whole point of these is to experiment, hence why Oh, shit, as I attack my microphone, hence why they're called EX Grenades. Experimental Grenades! Or Expert Grenades. You never know. Uh, regardless, though, yeah, we're gonna grab these high-density metals and toss them straight into our private locker. Because I think that's more valuable uh, than throwing them into the chiral printer and just getting rid of them entirely. Because you can never pull them back out as high-density items unless they've released an update. So I've only played through the game at launch. I never actually played through the game in its current form when they've uh, released all these cool updates and patches and stuff like that. Uh, regardless though, I like my ladder, I like my climbing anchor, we'll hold on to those for now, and we already have a second pair of boots anyway, so we're fine. 
no need to replace them until they're pretty much entirely broken. <laughs> you know what? Let me show you something. If you hold R2 or L2 for depending on the hand, if you press square to punch, that does a lot of damage, but you can also throw this at enemies and it auto locks on for you. And it's also very convenient to just throw away. All right, let's go back into our private room for now and take a rest. He's just doing the foot taps for now. All right, everyone. We're going to wrap up this episode here. Thank you so much for watching. In the next episode, we will be looking at uh, more of our interviews. Get rid of these tips for now, anyway. And uh, we'll be heading back on out and most likely building that bridge and moving on to the power plant. And that will unlock a very valuable item, the motorcycle, which will be super, super huge. So I can't wait to do that for you guys. And thank you so much for watching. Sorry for the delay again. So I try to make this episode a bit longer for you guys. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.